shine value in purpose. Your value is in purpose. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it give light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. When you think of the sun and the purpose of the sunshine, the sun rises at the crack of dawn. First light, some people call it, it pushes back the darkness and the cold and warm up the world. It causes what was hidden to become visible, including the path we walk. It grows, it allows things to grow. It lures flowers to bloom and ripen fruits. And ho, oh, how it nourishes us with vitamin D that no pill or food can even compare to. In all the different ways, we as followers of Christ bring light to the world. That's what Jesus said we are called to do. Jesus in the message spoke these word, words after stating that the, the attributes and the attitudes of his kingdom. Within this message, he told his disciples, the children of the kingdom, those who would follow him, you are the salt, you are the light. He state the purpose of the light and that purpose is to shine. The purpose of the light is to shine. Let your light shine. We all come with a purpose, but we have a choice whether we let it shine or not. That's why that word let is before it. Let your light shine. For us to sh truly shine, we must view our lives through God's divine purpose for us. Not through the lens of position or possession, situations, past or present struggles, but we view our lives through the lens of God's word. We find and we live, we find our purpose and we live it out through Jesus Christ. The light, like light in the darkness, the disciples who love God is filled with encouragement, hope, peace, faithfulness, goodness, and joy. The gift of the Holy Spirit shine through us. God has a purpose for us that is greater than our wishes, our ambitions, our occupation, or even the grandest wants. The word purpose we found in various form mentioned in the Bible 42 times. If we look around, we see many things that comes with a purpose. The piano comes with a purpose, playing music. At one time or another, we may have asked ourselves these questions. Why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? Where do I go from here? Probably the disciples of old was asking that same question. Lowly fishermen, based on their order of the day, under the tyranny of Rome, uncertain future, due, due to them looking forward to this messianic uh, deliverance, and here is the Messiah before them, teaching them a perplexing message. The Messiah addressed them, you must know who God made you to be. You are the salt of the earth, speaks of your identity. We will squ squander our life if we are confused with our identity, who we are, if, we don't know, if I don't know who I am, someone will convince me of who I'm not. We need to know who we are in Christ. Proverbs 22, verse 6, talks about training up a child in the way that he should go. 
then he will not depart. That word training up is to teach, to train, to direct, to start, to give instruction to them. These are done only through prayer and knowing God's way. When he said in the way that he should go, it speak to the child's purpose. Seek God for his divine purpose, not only for our lives, but for the lives of our children. As each person is born with a purpose. Just like you get a dishwasher, it has it, the, the manufacturer manufacture it with a purpose. But if we don't plug it in and use it, it's not fulfilling its purpose. It came ready with every part to go. We just need to plug it in. So are you and I, we come with a divine purpose. It declares why you exist. It captures the heart of why you and I are here on this earth and why Jesus died for us. It defines our life, not in terms of what we think, but what God thinks. It anchors our life in the character and the call of God. It clarifies the non-negotiable. It identifies what never changes about you or me, regardless of our circumstances. Regardless of our circumstances, you are who? God says you are. Job said this in Job 42 and verse 2. He's talking to God. He says, I know you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be tarred. The purpose of God cannot be tarred. Whatever our circumstances, amid the confusion, amidst fears, anxieties, and distraction of this world, we navigate through difficulties with contentment and we persevere because we know that the purpose of God shall come to pass. I will say that again because we all face all, some of this. We navigate through, we, in the midst of confusion, fears, anxieties, distraction of this present world. We navigate or we can navigate these difficulties with contentment and perseverance because we know that the purpose of God over our life cannot be taught. The purpose of God will prevail. Whatever happens, whatever some say, doesn't really matter. What matter is what he says. What matter is what God says about us and what we believe in what he says about us. Because God speak over our lives, but if we don't believe it, it profits us nothing. If we don't trust what he says, it profits us nothing. In Genesis chapter 20, 50 and verse 20, here is Joseph seeing things through God's perspective and through God's life. Joseph was approached by his brothers who originally sold him into slavery who threw him in a pit, and here is Joseph before them as they were afraid that he was in the position to take vengeance on them. Joseph said this, as for you, you meant, me, you meant harm for me, but God intended for good, for good purpose, so he could preserve the lives of many people as you can see this day. Within his dreams, his encounter with God he came to know the evidence of God in his life, that God has a purpose for his life. You know, even though the dream wasn't quite clear, even though his parents couldn't understand this dream, his father said he's going to stuck it in his back pocket because he don't understand this dream of this young son. He had, I don't know if you, if God ever give you a little bit of something and you just know that you know that you don't have the evidence, but you just know that you know that you know that God has a plan for your life. This was Joseph. He knew that he knew that he knew that God has a plan for him, that God called him, that God ordained him for a purpose. I wonder if... As he was going through all this and enduring all this, 
that just sometimes down inside of him, just telling him to go on. You just know uh, all the struggles, all the cares and the fears of this world, there is something down. There's an old song that says, something down inside of me telling me to go on. It's the Holy Ghost down inside of me telling me to go on. Purpose will spur us on to continue in the journey that God has called us to. Jeremiah looked at his life in wonder, and he said these words, Jeremiah 20 and verse 7, You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You outpowered me and prevail. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say I will not mention his name or speak anymore in his name, his word is within me like a fire, a fire shot up within my bones. I am weary of holding it in indeed. I cannot. You know why? Um, Jerem the, the word was like a, a fire shot up in Jeremiah's bone purpose. The Lord called both men and gave them a divine purpose in his kingdom. One was very clear because before, when God called Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, he said, before you were in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and I appoint you as a prophet to the nations. Clear, clear call, clear direction. Before I knew you, before I called you. Before you were in your womb, sorry, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. You came with a divine purpose. But see, the purpose of God can also cause us distress. It can lead us through difficulties, doesn't mean that the purpose of God will not prevail. With Jeremiah, it was people mocking him. He was disappointed because, you know, God called us with a purpose. And because we're people who like to live an easy street, we want to the purpose, but we don't want the difficulties that come with it. I think last week, uh, Brother William said, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. We want with the baby, we just don't want the, the water. It comes with disappointment. Uh, Jeremiah is saying, I was disappointed, Lord. You gave me your purpose. You told me I'm going to be a prophet, but you didn't tell me how hard this road was going to be. All day long, I was, there was challenges. There was mocking. People despised me, and he had the temptation to give up. But the purpose of God, the word of God, he said, was with him, within him like a fire shot up within his bones, even though he didn't want to speak it. He could not not speak it because purpose was driving him. Purpose was causing him to persevere. We see Joseph, the, the, uh, his, as I said earlier, his dream was a little bit cloudy. You can really see how it was going to pan out, but somewhere within this young man, he must have hold on to what God uh, showed him in Genesis chapter 37, verse 5 to 11. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf, my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gather around mine and bow down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream and this time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars are bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? 
His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in his heart. Don't let what some say, don't let the hatred of man, the jealousy of man, cause us to give up and not pursue the dream and the vision, the purpose that God has given to us. Our perspective is very limited. It's typically most focused on our own life and the life of those immediately around us. But God's way is far greater. It wasn't just about Joseph and his family. God had a nation and many people on his mind when he gave Joseph that dream. The purpose that God called you for is not limited to what, how we want our lives. A good job, good pain, a good house, a good car, a, a nice spouse, a few obedient children, and, you know, we're all uh, set. God's dream and vision and purpose for our lives is far greater. You see, the dream and the interpretation and the understanding was just Joseph and his immediate family, but God had an entire nation and a whole entire other nation on his mind. His desire was to, serve, was to save and to reach many, while Joseph and the parents' vision perspective is very narrow. There is no way we can comprehend God's plan for ourselves through our own perspective or on what some say or how they see us. It's not about what others say, it's about what God says. It's not even about how you feel. Because Jeremiah said, I, people mock me, I just don't even want to talk to them anymore. I don't want to deliver this word anymore. But he says, the word was like a fire in my bone. Whether man receive it or not, we ought to obey the mission that God has called us to. The purpose that God has for us. Time, past, present, future situation and condition has nothing to do with the plan that God has for you. God has given us purpose. God knows the opposition ahead of time. He will redeem it. He can use it. As Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Is it possible that the evil and the people that are opposing you, that God will take all of that and work it together for good, for his divine purpose? Joseph view his life as God is in control of everything. If we view our lives that God is in control of everything, no matter what happened to us, we will trust him that he have it in hand, which means I won't get so annoyed at people as easily as I do. I will learn to lay it down because God is in control of it. I believe it so much that I believe the, the word in Numbers when Balak called uh, Balaam to curse God's people. And Balak look, ba uh, Balaam look at Balak and says, I cannot curse what God didn't curse. And the very words that came out of his mouth, instead of a curse, it is a blessing. We don't worry about what some say because the only thing that stands over our life is what he says. His purpose will prevail. It's, do we believe that? Do we believe that God is in control of all things? That what men meant for evil God's purpose will surpass it and make it for good. Because the word says, E work all things together for good to those who love him. But we must have faith and take comfort that God is acting on our behalf regardless of what we're going through. We must have faith and take comfort in knowing that God is acting on our behalf, regardless of what we're going through. The purpose of God, 
the, our purpose is ultimately set in the plan of God, not our own plans. This doesn't mean that we're devoid of purpose. In fact, our purpose is for him. It's from him. We were created through him, for him. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, where, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. The good way, the rough way, the side way, the upside way, the down ways. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. The New Living Translation, uh, translation not just about you and I, God, have a bigger view. You intend to harm me, Genesis 50, 20. But God intended all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. We cannot allow what men say to cause us to lose focus. We cannot allow even how we feel to reduce the power of God in our lives. God has called us and set purpose within us. God's plan cannot be taught. So when we are connected to the living God, we live out his divine purpose. Take comfort in the fact that there is nothing that can ruin God's plan for our lives. Proverbs 19, 21, many are the plans of a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevail. Now, even in saying that, Let's go back to the text. Let your light shine. That word let caused me to realize I am my worst enemy. You see, nothing externally, as much as we want to blame a lot of things and a lot of people and a lot of stuff going on, nothing can cause my light not to shine except me. Let your light shine. When I believe God, I will let go of my indecisions, my fear, my pride, my selfishness. Nothing can stop the purpose of God. When I let go of my anger, my hate, when lies and all of these things come upon me, if I hold on to the fact that God is in control of every aspect of our life, we can let our lives shine, regardless of what it may be. Because we truly believe and we truly see God and our lives through God's perspective. That's how Joseph saw his life. That's how he saw his brothers. You imagine uh, at the age, I think it was 17, being driven away from home, thrown in a pit, disregarded, lies were told on him, his own brothers hate him, was jealous of him, he was thrown into prison, and he could say, all of the mess in my life is because of you. Isn't that how we see it? All the trouble that I have is because of you. Lord, if you would just move them out of my way, I could fulfill the purpose that you have called me to. If you would just do this, Lord, I could fulfill what you call me to. But here is this young man. He goes through all of this, yet he never lost sight that regardless of what he's going through, God had a divine purpose in his life. So no matter where he end up, no matter what happened, God's plan must prevail because God speak it. God has spoken it, so it must come to pass. 
Sometimes the purpose of God comes through uncomfortable and unimaginable ways and means. He is serving God. He is loving God. And God spoke into both men's life. But it does mean that there is not opposition. We live in a world where there is opposition. We heard this last week. We're in a world where we'll be aided if we stand in the truth of the word of God. We are serving God's purpose in this world. And if we hanker in and serve the purpose of God, we shall prevail. Because God said it, his purpose cannot be taught. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 36, now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decay. If you notice in this verse, it says that David had a purpose. And he never left the earth until the purpose of God was fulfilled in his life. I want you to think of this. He never left the earth, according to Acts chapter 13, until the purpose of God prevail in his life. David didn't pass away until he had fulfilled God's purpose. Personally, I have held on to this word over my life. That it doesn't matter where I am, where I'm going, and believe me, when it comes to my body, the enemy has tried over and over to knock it down. But whatever illness, whatever circumstance, whatever situation comes, I step back and I said, God, if this was the vehicle of your purpose that I come out of this earth, through this, within this time, I surrender. But if this is not your purpose, it shall not prevail over my life. Many times things happen to us and it is not even so much the disease or stuff that kills us, it's the fear and the stress that takes us out. But if we hold on to the purpose of God and speak, no matter what the diagnosis is, speak into it that says, if this is not the plan and purpose of God over my life, I will rise up above it and I shall not leave until the purpose of God prevail over my life. Because that's not the plan of God for me. With confidence in the purpose of God, we can stand in this earth in contentment regardless of the weapon that is formed against us. We can stand and declare, God, you have called me for a purpose. You have called me for a time, and if it's not your design time, it shall not come to pass. God has shaped and prepared us for a unique role in this world. We are destined to bring forth glory to God. We are destined to declare the grace of God, the power of God that worketh within us unlimited. When we, the children of God, step before, whether it's finance, whether it's in our health, wherever we go, when we step before even the accuser, the enemy, when we step before him, we should step in with the power of God's word over our lives. And no matter what man say, it shall not come to pass unless God says it. Many times we worry about people cursing us. But as the children under the covenant, we need to say, when somebody curses, start praising God and say, that curse must become a blessing because I am a child of the king. Purpose is in my life that men may see your good works, Jesus said, and get in, when we stand in purpose and in obedience and will glorify our Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine Understand our unique destiny. Start with understanding what God's word says over our lives. Don't let somebody tell you who you're not because they only see through a glass very cloudy. 
let the word of God prevail over our lives. This is something that I am trying to teach and to pound into uh, Nathan's skull at his, this age because we grew up in a world that can be cruel in the things that they say and do. And when he comes home and he complains about whether it's racial or whatever it is, somebody says something about him, I say, son, what do you know about yourself? Tell me something about yourself. Then I say, what God, what does God say about you? We talked about what God says. He make you beautifully and fearfully and wonderfully made. You are his divine creation. So then I say, it doesn't matter what anybody else say, it does not come into factor. It only matters what God says and what you believe about yourself. Do we believe what God says about us? John chapter 15, 1 to 11, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is a vine grower. He removed every branch in me that bears not fruit. Every branch that bear fruit he prunes and make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and wither. Such branches are gathered and thrown in the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become his disciple, my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. I have said these things so that your joy may be, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be do you feel unloved? Jesus said, as the Father loved me, so I love you. Our, our biblical purpose is not a lengthy list of to-do list of duties. It is an expression of why God created us, his grace and his power, enabling us to fulfill his kingdom mandate in and through us. It's relationship. Abide in me. Relationship. Connectivity is how we shine. We could have this beautiful light standing here, but if I don't plug it in, it ain't going to shine. If we don't turn it on, it ain't going to shine. It's relationship. It's connecting with the vine, as Jesus said. It's not about doing a list of do's and don'ts. It's about a relationship, and out of that relationship, we reflect the glory and the goodness of God. Focus more on being in him than doing for him. Our purpose clarifies who God shapes us to be. Understanding who God makes us to be will prepare us to discover and pursue God's vision for our lives. The problem is sometimes the world causes us to compare ourselves with, our, with each other. But it's possible, Brother Chris, that you're the kettle and I'm just a frying pot. And each is created for God's purpose but to fulfill a different purpose. Can you imagine your kettle trying to fry your eggs? <laughs> Was manufactured for that purpose. We find our purpose in our relationship with God. God did not call us to imitate anyone. He calls us to connect with him. And through him, we plug into the per divine purpose that he has called us to, and we are able to shine. 
Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his divine purpose. We know. Do we know? Do we know that all things work together for good? Even the things that we don't want, the God says, I can work it together for good. John 18, 37. This is Jesus before Pilate. Thou saith that I am a king. To this end I was born. And for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. You see, Jesus knew his purpose. Jesus knew why he came. He said, I came to do the will of the Father. You and I are here to do the will of the Father. I came to save sinners. Through us, we need to be the vehicle that the word come through. He says, how can they, they, they get saved if there's not a preacher? How can they hear if we're not speaking, if we're not shining? We, he said, I come to bring light into the dark world. Jesus then turned to us and said, you are the light of the world. Jesus came to make people like him, to bear witness for him. That's what he calls us to do. God's purpose for our life is the very meaning of our existence. And without knowing this, we often suffered ignorance or our own insignificance. We value ourselves lower than God value us because we do not know or understand that God has a purpose for us. Do you ever, uh, there, was, there, there are paintings Sometimes that is found in garage sales that people take and they'll put them away in garage sale and sell them for $5 because they do not know the value. They did not understand the value of the painting until somebody picked it up and go, this thing worth thousands of dollars. I wonder if because we're not connected sometime to the purpose and the plan of God that we value ourselves lower than God himself values us. We fall prey to the illusion that our life does not matter and we have no connection or impact in the world around us because we just exist. We do not understand that God created us with a divine purpose. Purpose is not just in the pulpit. Purpose is not just on the pulpit. Purpose is in the pew. Every last one of you was created with a divine purpose. You matter in the kingdom. You matter in this earth. God has a divine plan for your lives. I wonder if sometimes we're feeling unfulfilled and like a wind blowing all over because we are not connected to the divine purpose of God. We're pursuing things and we're pursuing position and we're pursuing elevation in this world and we're losing out on our divine purpose why God call us and oftentimes we feel like a fish out of water. Floundering here and there because we're not connected to the divine purpose of why God have us here. And that's why many times we are men most miserable. Because we're not connected into what God has called us to do. Body of Christ, we have no excuse not to fulfill the plan of God for our lives. As we see with Jeremiah... It was not a comfortable place. Today we sit here, we have nobody mocking and booing. And oftentimes we still say we don't want to speak. And sometimes we do have the mocking and the booing, but it's for his glory, for his praise. And so because we know and we have insight that our lives matter, regardless of how men may treat us, our lives matter. The word of God connects us to our purpose. The presence of God connects us to our purpose. We see in the lives of these three men, we look at David. David was anointed 
as king. But let's look back before he was anointed. He was forgotten by his parents. Could be because there's too much of them. I'm not beating the parent too much. I don't know why they didn't remember him. And I don't know why he says, even if my mother and my father forsakes me, maybe they were just tired of having kids. Who knows? But we know that he suffers through some of that. We know that he was called and he was anointed. But he wasn't put in position to fulfill his purpose right away. We know that he went back to the desert to look after his father's sheep. Even after he was anointed and called. Even though purpose was over him and divine position was awaiting him, he was sent back to the desert. And then we know that he was called into Saul's house, called into the kingdom. And everything was going well. The Bible says that Saul loved him with such a precious love. And then some woman, bless those women, get up one day and decided as Saul and David is coming from war, started to sing. Saul has said his thousand and David is ten thousand. I'm sure David would have wanted those women to shut up. Stop it. I don't know if he looked over in Saul's face and saw what was happening that the light certainly dim and Saul starts seeing him in a different light. I, don't, I know you've never been anywhere where you're favored in a position and all of a sudden all eyes are on you and you know somebody want to take you out because they want your position on the job. But here is Saul and Saul saying, listen, this little wuss is going to come and take over my position. I mean, thousand? And they gave David ten thousand? From that day, David's life took on a whole heap of trouble. You see, purpose and the destiny and the plan of God can cause opposition. Sometimes the very opposition that we face is because purpose, destiny, and anointing is upon you. And so you find people coming after you. But see, no matter where and how far David had to run, it didn't matter how many caves or how many desert he had to hide in, purpose was still on his life. Couldn't take it even when he went to battle and came back and all of his family were gone and the, the people that were with him, the very people that were backing him, turn against him. The very men that were fighting with him says we should stone him because he's the leader and he's the one that caused our families to be gone. Let's destroy him. Nobody was there to encourage him, the Bible says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. I wonder if he went back and he said, but God, I remember the day when you anointed me. I remember the words you speak out of over my life. And though there is no one here, your word remain. There was nobody there to encourage him, but purpose was already in him. Nothing that happened could taw what God had for his life. Jeremiah 32, 19 says, Great are your purposes and mighty are your deeds. Your eyes are open to the ways of all mankind. To everyone. God is not blind to the injustice. God is not blind to the things that is happening around us. He says you reward each person according to their conduct and as their deeds deserve. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know we know this one. Everybody probably in here can say it. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know, even before Toya put it up on the board, for I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. 
plans to give you a hope and a future. You know what God was telling these people who committed sin and found themselves in exile? God is saying, I still did not desert you. Regardless of where you are, I have not desert you. I have not abandoned you. I am with you and my promise will come to pass. My plan and my purpose for your life will come to pass. First Peter 2 and verse 9 says before, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into is wonderful light. You know, there are days when we don't feel like we're chosen, but you need to speak what God says over your life. Royal priesthood represent the duties of the priests in the Old Testament. He's saying, I call you to represent me. You are representative and the representation of the kingdom of God. We do each have different and unique ways of living out our purpose, as we discussed earlier. But the root of it all is as Christ followers, our main purpose is to glorify God. Our main purpose is to glorify God, to declare his praise, to point others to him through his love that is in us. We all have a light to shine. God has given a light. He has put that light within us. He said he called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. And the light shines best in the darkness. So when you feel as if there's darkness around you, turn the light on. Turn it up. Those who love God, as stated before, will emit encouragement, hope, peace, fulfillment, faithfulness, sorry, goodness, and joy. What is said about your past sins, what he said about your current condition, doesn't matter. It's what God says that matters. If you're saying today, Lord, there's just so many things going on, whether in my past, in my present, uh, I can't see my future, I want to draw you to get a, God's amazing word that says, I have a plan and a purpose for you. Before you were, I knew you. Before you came into this world, I, had a plan, I have a plan and a purpose for your life. Paul lived a life rejecting Jesus and persecution, persecuting Christians. Then God used even that part of Paul's life to bring glory to him. When he said to him, I'm bringing you into a powerful, effective teaching mission, but I'm also going to use all of your life as a testimony in this journey. You and I exist to live an authentic, intimate relationship with Jesus and let him shape our life in such a ways that believers are encouraged and unbelievers are motivated to join the journey of discipleship. But we all must let our light shine. The text says that we do not have your light and hide it Oh, my bushel is still showing under a bushel and cover it. It gives no use to the people around you. And oftentimes the things that cause our light to not shine is what some say. Situations that we're going through. Past circumstances or present circumstances cause us to hide our light. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Shine it so that people will see and glorify God. Live it out so people can see a different way to live. 
Let your light shine with every good intention. God has created you with a purpose, and that purpose is significant. Because if this was nighttime and we turn off all the lights in this place, I remember I was at a conference, and, oh, I could do that. And at that conference, we were there chit-chatting, and this person wanted to go home, and they came and they turned off all the lights on us, and we couldn't see. I was very aggravated. I remember I said to, to the person, that is very rude. <laughs> you could simply say it's time to go instead of turning off all the light on us. We couldn't see anything until he flipped the light back on. That's the significance that God has placed upon your life. When the switch of your life is turned on, it is needed and it is valued. You are valued not because of what you have, not because of what people say, but you're valued because he creates you and he places you. Just by the very fact that God creates you, there is value. He doesn't create anything without a purpose. We are not meant to flow through life without a cause. We do ourselves and God a disservice when we think, uh, we think in this way and we allow circumstances of life to cause us to devalue ourselves. It is difficult at times to identify our purpose outside of Christ. It is difficult sometimes to even understand what God says. I remember the first time I was told, uh, and, and, and I wasn't in any spiritual place, I went to a conference and I was dragged there Thank God for my spiritual mom. She would let me get away with nothing. She says, I'm picking you up. And she dragged me to this conference. And as she dragged me to this conference, this little white hair man, very white, white hair. He was so gray, but he didn't even look gray, look white. He came up to me and he said these words, blessed are the feet of those who bring good news. And I looked at him like he's lost his ever loving mind. I wanted to see him again to apologize because I thought, you know, there goes a false prophet. Because right now I am so in depression, I don't know what he's talking about. Blessed are the feet of those who bring good news. And then he said something. He says, God is going to celebrate this birthday. This is probably about a month from my birthday. And you know what we did? Because we, we take God's word from our perspective my husband threw me a big birthday party. Guess what? The depression never leave. I was even more depressed. But I remember even in the midst of that depression as I began to read the word and God began to open the word up and I began to understand God's word. Just me and God lying in that bedroom and I began to understand that word and it took years of some years of not wanting to go and then years of realizing that if I don't go, I will never be at peace. I relented and said, okay, God, have it your way. Let God purpose come into fruition. We don't know fully the plan that God have for us where we are. I didn't understand that word, blessed on the mountain are the feet of those who bring good news. I had no news to bring then, but God knew what he created and put inside of me even before I know it. I'm here this morning. I'm not just telling you this just to tell you. I'm here this morning to tell you that wherever you are, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, God creates you with a divine purpose. And even though we may not understand it like Joseph, how is this going to come to pass, Lord? I don't see the pathway like David, how this is going to happen when it seems as if everything in my life, instead of coming good, is driving further. I don't understand it, Lord, but trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God is in control. Give him full control. Trust him. Abide in him. He will not 
fail us. He know the plan that he have for us. And he have the power to bring us into the place that he have for us. Regardless of uh, where we are, regardless of the fact that, Lord, I don't see how you're going to do it, trust him. He is God, all powerful and almighty. He is God of host, every host. He is God and there is none other. And if he says it, he will do it. All I have to do is trust him. The Bible says that the children of Israel saw all the miracles. They had all the words. They have everything. But it was not mixed with faith. And so it profit them nothing. Body of Christ, we are not called to just sit here and warm a bench. God has a divine purpose for our lives. And it began with surrender and trusting him that he will work all things together for good because it's about his name. Now I understand fully when David uh, prayed this psalm or wrote this psalm when he says that you, for your name's sake, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Makes me to lie down in green pastures, which means wherever I am, because a lot of time the pastures where he was hiding didn't green. But wherever he is, God's provision is there. Leads me beside still waters. I can find rest even in the most uncomfortable place because the God of rest is in me and he's with me. He restores my soul. All the places that have been broken and hurt. It doesn't mean that because people say things, word, words hurt. Circumstance and situation hurts. But God, when I give it to you, you restore my soul because you have your divine purpose in me. Leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We are here in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You see, I don't have to defend myself. God will defend his name over my life. And so I don't have to pick a fight, look a fight. All I've got to do is stand in him and he will fulfill it all in and through me. You see, sometimes we fight battles we shouldn't be fighting and that's why we're tired and we're saying, God, why am I so tired? And he's saying, if you rested in me, I will do it for you. Trust me, there's purpose within you. And I'll close with this, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. I want you to take out the you, and I want us to read it this morning and put the me. We're going to stand and we're going to turn on that light. For God is working in me, giving me the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Let's rest in that. That God is doing all the work within us. Even what he calls us to do, it is God who has given us the power to do it. Do not let circumstances do not let the enemy boast over our lives. Do not give what some say more power. That's why I believe Jesus turned to his disciples and said, but who do you say? Rexon, what do you say about yourself? Is it what the naysayers say? Is it what God says? Sister Betty, what do you say? Is it what God says? Is it what God says? Is it the doctor's diagnosis? Or is it what God says? Because sometimes we hear something 
We hear the word cancer or diabetes or whatever and we, we, our, our spirit fall and everything fall but we need to take up the word of God and says cancer you may come but you have no power unless it is God's design plan over my life. You're just a visitor. You're just a visitor. Wherever we go I hear people say that there are certain places they won't go. I'm making a trip to Jamaica and there's a lot of violence going on there. But I don't leave God in Canada. It goes with me, brother. And the same protection that he have on me here, he have there. And this is my confession, because I know my mom, you're watching today, she was getting a little bit nervous. This is my confession. If it was not your design plan for me to go in Jamaica, I'm coming back here. And if it is your design plan, then Satan still don't win because absent from the body is present with the Lord. Church of the living God, we need to rise up and take back the word of God and the power of God. The body of Christ should really say it and mean it. Oh, death! Where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? There is no victory because I'm hidden in God, in Christ, and I will not leave this earth until the purpose of God is fulfilled as long as I abide in the vine. As long as I abide in the vine, there's no fear. There's no fear I believe to see, David says, the goodness of God in the land of the living. He said, a thousand may come up against me, but they just fall. Ten thousand on my right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Why? Because the purpose of God, the anointing and the presence and the power of God reside within me. And nothing will happen until he says it. That's why Job said, God, your purpose cannot be taught. I need you to, for a moment, close your eyes. Whatever it is the enemy may be using as a fear or a, tem a torment over your life this morning, that God, I surrender it to you, and I choose to trust your word. I choose to trust what you say. Not what some say, not the circumstances or the situations that are around me, but I anchor in your word. When they went to stone Jesus, he said, my time is not yet. That you would give us divine discernment, wisdom and understanding, that we will only speak your word. I endeavor to be like the Shunammite woman. And I pray this morning you will endeavor to be like the Shunammite woman. Even though there was a dead son at home, she did not speak a word until she stood before the prophet. I'm encouraging you, body of Christ, don't speak words over your life until God confirm that word. They ask her, woman, husband first ask, is it well? She never said there was a dead son at home. She never spoke death over that child. She said, it is well. It is well. It is well. It is God who raised up and who gave this child. And I will not speak a word until I hear from God again about this child. Can we do that for our own lives? I will not speak a word until I hear what God have to say over my life. And when she even went to the prophet, she held on to his leg. And the man beside the prophet said, get off of him. The prophet said, leave her, leave her alone because something happened and God hasn't revealed it to me. She didn't say a word. Don't, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Brethren, don't speak anything over your life that God hasn't pre speak, spoken over your life. Don't repeat anything over your life that God hasn't repeat over your life. Let's be like that woman, slow to speak until God says. I believe if she spoke death that the child was dead, she would have given up. 
but she held on until she got God's perspective for this life. Hold on for God's perspective over your life. Don't speak what you see and what some say. Hold on to the word of God. Hold on until they tell you you're a fool for Christ. But I tell you something, I'd rather be a fool for Christ and see the power of God work through our lives than falter and die in a wilderness we weren't called to die in. The children of Israel was never meant to die in that wilderness. They were calling to a promise. Amen. Don't allow the cares and the fears. I know we are under economic, and I'm trying to close here, but I know we're under economic distress. Gas prices up. There are things that are coming at us, left, right, and center. But let us remember whose economy we're under. And let's stand on the word of God. He said he'd provide for us according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's stand by faith, believing to see the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Thank you, Father, that you have not abandoned us. Lord, even in their disobedience, you could have fully abandoned the children of Israel, but you gave this word through Jeremiah. Those who were already gone into exile, those who were on the verge of going into exile, they heard these words, I have a plan for you.